All right, good evening. We're going to go ahead and call to order the workshop session of the governing body of the city of Lampasas at this time. If you're properly distanced from the person clear nearest to you, you may remove your mask. Um, the first item on the workshop session this evening is discussion and updates concerning COVID-19. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, it's good to be here again this evening. I've got a brief update for you. The state of Texas currently has an estimated 272,933 active cases. This is up 110,000 from the last time that we talked. Uh, fatality count is now at 23,911. Lampasas County has a total of 536 cases, 75 of which are active. Uh, just received an update from Dr. Hay that we are current, or, I'm sorry, Last time we met, we had 536 total cases, 75 active. The update from Dr. Hay, we have 788 total cases now, 82 of which are active and 14 fatalities. The only news today on the front, I think you probably all heard, uh, Pfizer did ship some of their vaccine today. Uh, several places in Texas did receive their shipments. We are not on the first round of shipments. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Uh, they're going to the bigger cities and then some of the smaller communities that have had major outbreaks around people's starting over there. That's all I have for you this evening. If y'all have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Did you? Okay. I, I do want to add, a, yes. you know, I hope that we all continue to pray for our community members, including our own council member, uh, Mr. Nelson, who is in the hospital fighting COVID this evening. So. Okay. Item number three on the workshop agenda, discussion regarding December 18th, 2020 council planning session. Uh, Mayor and council, I wanted to take the opportunity uh, tonight to discuss and uh, get your input on potential uh, agenda for Friday's get together. Uh, in the past, this has been about a, you know, a little more than a half day uh, exercise that we go through facilitated by staff. Uh, at this point, we're planning on at least starting with the similar format that, that we've used in the past. I think the one thing that we uh, discussed at the end of September was not trying to duplicate the work that's already being done in the CIP program and uh, in our budgeting, et cetera. Uh, so to take a look uh, at, at a number of things, there are a couple of items that I think the timing is good to focus on. Uh, one would be uh, the pretreatment study and having that, the presentation of that final study being rolled out to council. Uh, we do also uh, have received the uh, final completed chapter five and chapter six for the comprehensive plan. And so we could uh, focus on that uh, slightly because of uh, its rollout just this past week. Um, we do wanna take a look at also uh, 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 the facilities uh, that have been constructed in the last couple of years, the water wastewater shop and lab, uh, the pretreatment facilities, sewer treatment plant, uh, as well as the IT office. We had originally thought about... Test. I just need to speak into it. Sorry. We had originally thought we would have adequate... Uh, space, et cetera, to do everything at the water, wastewater shop and lab. After looking at it uh, last week with the assistant city manager, we felt like we'd start there and then convene, reconvene back over here at the Calvert Municipal Building and that would afford us the opportunity to uh, also visit the IT office shop uh, uh, head, headquarters, as it were. Um, working lunch and then uh, taking a look at some of those broad areas or broad planning categories, uh, communication, image and promotion, community engagement, capacity building, resources, professional development, as assets and stewardship. Uh, but like I said, this is, uh, we, we also will take some time for any hot buttons that are out there. We know that uh, there has been, a, council has expressed an interest and in let's, let's get on with some of these updates to the, to the personnel policy. You know, let's take a look at our own governance policy as a uh, just kind of a, a best practice to do every now and then. And, and certainly we want to take, uh, uh, take time out of the agenda to do those sorts of things. But again, this is, this is your agenda. We will facilitate it based on what you would like to see done. Uh, and with that, I'd, I'd welcome your comment and input and direction. Finley, 
Is there any mention, I didn't see a mention of the hostess house, is there any way you can kind of bring us up to speed on things that are happening there or that will be happening soon? Sure. And what we can do as well, uh, similar to what we've done probably a couple of times in the last several months, is kind of run through project by project. We've getting, given you a little snippet, but maybe this affords us the opportunity to go into a little more detail, particularly on items that, you know, you'd like more information on the hostess house. Um, colored school, um, you know, Councilman, uh, you know, Councilman Clark has, you know, got a couple of projects that he wants to make sure are on top of the list. So as we talk about projects and priorities, those are, those are things that we can certainly uh, sink our teeth into a little bit more. I agree. I would like to see that we have some time scheduled for the uh, personnel policy. There's some different things within that that we need to review, but as we discuss expectations of, of staff, I think we might also want to address council expectations and responsibilities as council members. So if we can have some time for that as well. We will begin to formalize and assemble this program and the, the flow uh, for how it's facilitated here in the next day or two. So by all means, if you have additional comments, if you wake up in the middle of the night, don't call me in the middle of the night, but just <laughs> text me or write it down and, you, and we'll uh, make sure we try to incorporate as best we can in our, in our program. And I'd, I'd welcome any, any additional comments. Anything else, Council? All right, thank you, Finley. Next item, dis discussion regarding demolition costs related to substandard structures. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Sorry, placement is awful. Um, this item was brought up at the last meeting with regarding to our substandard structures with regards to the demolition process. Um, typically, um, when we go out and we cite them and we do certified letters, we get to the point where it's a time where the construction board actually deems it is, it is a substandard structure and they um, make it a requirement that it actually goes out for a demolition bid. At that time, we go out for bids and we look at the best alternatives and try to see what we can do to accommodate and to facilitate that process. Um, and typically, the um, property owner will be able to facilitate some, or some of the times the city will take over that responsibility and demo the property. What we've done at this point is we've gone through our Chapter 18 building re regulations, and we've identified all of the steps that are required when it comes to substandard structures. So from the time that we sent out our notification, our certified letters, any type of citations that we do, up to the liens on the property, if we demol demolish it on our own accord, and then, of course, the, the, the actual foreclosure of the property. So we brought this to you to kind of go through the whole, um, all the information that, that we're allowed to do, but at the same time, we still want to have more time to research and see what we've done historically and also see what else legal might have for us to go forward with even doing payment plans with the property owners and give them a set amount of time to pay back that, basically, the, the demolition cost. As staff does that work, I think it's important that we keep in mind that the reason that we've got this on the agenda tonight and the reason that we're looking into this is we want to avoid situations that I believe that we're currently, the position we're put in, the city is not, one, financially responsible, nor should we be financing as a bank mm -hmm. the cost to rehab an investment property. And if owners are making recent purchases of property in this town, they have a diligence themselves to investigate cost and expectations for what their project is. It does not come back on the city of Lampasas to do that. It's not the responsibility of the taxpayers to fund that cost for their investment property. Absolutely, and we do agree, and this was an isolated in incident that did come up with this type of property. Um, typically, it is the homeowner and not an investment property, but we will look into it more and see what we can do, especially with a payment plan, because that is the direction we kind of want to go in. I think part of the criteria for the review process needs to be the time of purchase. You know, if it's been purchased recently, either whether to be a home or an investment property, uh, you know, the responsibility goes back to that the person who purchased that property. Absolutely. Mr. Clark? I just had one question. Do we have a policy or does the, let me put it this way, the appraisal district have a policy in regards to how long they move on, a, before they move on a tax lien with a piece of property? 
I know there's there's been some that have been long term that they've never taken to a lawyer or anything, and it's hard for us to move forward with some of this stuff, you know, after 180 days if it's still sitting out there and they haven't taken some action. Is there any way that we can encourage them to develop the property? I, I think the experience has been, just as you suggested, it's been a real mixed bag. Uh, somebody will get motivated and you'll see a, you know, you'll see a number of properties go up for tax sale, but then you'll see some properties that have delinquent taxes for uh, more than five years uh, that are still. I think the one question too that we want to ask counsel is, our legal counsel is, you know, if somebody pays their ad valorem tax, particularly on a piece of property without uh, without a building or a structure on it, it's, it's going to be pretty minimal. So as long as they continue to pay that tax, we can't foreclose. I know. Um, and so one of the questions we have for, for JC, and, and actually JC may refer us to a, a firm that's more uh, well-versed in foreclosure, um, but one of the questions we have is can we can we eliminate that out of our our own requirements or is that something that is in line with what the state requires? But I, I would, th this is, it, it gets messy, particularly if you have an adversarial uh, relationship with the property owner, uh, but at the same time, there has to be a way that we could do better in terms of the recouping of at least a portion of our costs. Well, I certainly when agree with the mayor. I think in the past we've been, subsidizing some of the developers on buying up these lots and stuff mm -hmm. and we end up paying to get them cleaned up and mm -hmm. and uh, you know I just think it's not a, not a real good deal and I'm really uh, concerned that they don't have some kind of policy at the appraisal that the Becky the if I'm reading this properly, it does state that after 180 days, if the client, the homeowner has not paid the lien, the city can foreclose. So we do have that as an option, right? But that comes back, that comes back to being, um, there's other, um, other things to can, yeah, there's other things to consider with regards to that too, like their taxes. That's what we're talking about. They have to be behind on their taxes. But this only and says that the lien is not paid. So maybe need to clarify that a okay. little bit or have we ever tried to enforce this 180 days rule? To be honest with you, I don't think we've ever enforced it because typically when we have been a part, which it's been a few years, like, don't get me wrong, it's been a while since we've actually demoed property, right. but when we have, we've actually been really lucky in regards to that lot being sold. I don't know if we have broke even, I haven't really investigated that part, but we have been relatively lucky with those properties that have sold relatively quickly. We haven't had to go to that extreme from my understanding, but again, that's part of the research we wanna do and kind of see where we've been historically, where we wanna go forward. But like I said, we're really leading towards wanting to do some type of payment plan, at least to, to have the property owner being some type of responsible for making payments to us. Cause we do bill them, we do invoice them when we you know right. demo. And we just want to kind of make it more upfront rather than here's your invoice, here's your invoice. But if they sign something at the beginning, letting them know that, hey, you've only got three years to pay this back, regardless if you sell the property or not, it kind of holds their feet to the fire. And that's kind of what we want to do. Okay. And, and I, th I think if you're going to let them make payments, those are short term, very short term. Yeah, three years seems like a long time for a payment plan to me. Um, and like uh, the mayor said, you know, we really aren't, a, a bank, but you know, are there any penalties or fees or anything that go along with that? That's all part of what we're going to research and validate. Three years is just an example. We don't have anything ironed out by any means. It's still going to go through legal. It's just something that we wanted to put more strict plan in, in place. Anything else from council? Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to hearing back. Thank you. Next item is discussion regarding concerns and communication from TxDOT regarding South 281 traffic signals. Good evening, Council Mayor. Uh, Chief Bailey uh, expressed to me last week some community concerns about the intersection there at 281 at the entrance to the high school. Um, I believe it was in response to a uh, crash that was there last week. I uh, spoke with the officer that took that report, looked into that crash, and it would appear that the 
crash was caused by somebody running the red light. So then the concern came, we wanted to make sure that the light was cycling properly, the timing of it was correct. So I went out there personally and watched the intersection at the end of school at the approximate time of that crash and I saw uh, no red flags. Uh, the lights were cycling correctly. The yellow light was at about a four second increment, which what I understand from TxDOT, that's proper for that speed limit and that type of intersection. So I uh, do not come to you with any suggestions on things that we can do to correct that light. Uh, I think that the situation can be corrected uh, or made better by uh, stepped up enforcement of that intersection. Um, making sure that compliance, uh, we gain compliance with people not running that red light. And we plan on doing that by aggressively or proactively patrolling that intersection at the beginning and end of school specifically. I do know Chief Bailey and I have discussed this for quite some time. I know it's also been a concern of hers and she hears from community members also. I know that as you are coming to that intersection, if, if you're traveling north, okay. prior to coming into town is the light bar that comes across with the flashing light warning you that there's a red light ahead. As you're heading south leaving town, there's not that same notification of that light. And in fact, due to that curve, that light's pretty much blind until you're right there on top of it. Mm -hmm. I think people at that point are building speed as they believe that they've, you know, especially sure. people passing through, they believe that they've gone through town and they're they're leaving town and accelerating and trying to beat the light. Um, I know that Texot recently went out and put up the temporary orange signs with the red with the with the you know red light ahead sign with the little wavy flags and that sort of thing. She and I had discussed that she'd requested rumble strips and they had not approved that for that intersection. Um, if it's a finance issue, is that something the city could cover? Is that, or do we have to get their permission to put them down? And then, I mean, My understanding that any, any road improvement signage changes to the actual roadway to include rumble strips would require TxDOT approval. Um, I don't think it would be a finance issue. I think it's more of a getting their approval issue. If they'll approve it, no finance issue. Hmm. I mean, it, we obviously can discuss that and offer that out, but I don't think that if that If that um, greases the wheel any, that we'd be willing to cover the cost if they could get it approved, I, I would be in support of that. Ms. Keeney could probably speak, you know, yeah. more authority than any of us about how nervous that is, but I can tell you, not only do we have adults reaching out after an incident, there's high school students themselves that are calling and reaching out and saying, it's scary, I'm scared to pull out. I've watched somebody almost get hit. We're not doing things as we leave that school that are dangerous. It is people blowing through with no regard for, the, they have no intention of stopping. Right. I was gonna say, everything that, that the mayor said, I was gonna suggest because I've really, I mean, I drive that all the time. I have to pull out from the high school and coming through. And I really honestly think because myself, even myself, I thought once I was going to die because I like, I had stopped, I look, I'm very aware of those cars coming because they, a lot of times they just blow right through it. And so even at one point, and it's always coming from town heading, heading south. And I was really, you know, been looking at the signage and stuff. And I think that it has a lot to do with if, if, if we could appeal to TxDOT to have some kind of warning sign, because you wouldn't think that it's a blind intersection, but kind of with that curve, and because it does make you feel like you're building speed because it goes from 35 to 45 to 55 pretty quickly. And, it, you know, when you're going 55, you know that 65, 75 is coming sure. and because you think you're out of town. And then all of a sudden there's that light. And, you know, because they'll try to stop. And I had a guy that it was way back and he just didn't see me and I was pulling out and I kind of stopped and I thought, oh, I'm going to die. And then he like swerved behind me. But it's, I think it's the same direction that uh, Coach Myers got hit. Mayor, the, if my understanding is correct, when I used to deal with them, all of that's going to come out of Brownwood. Correct, uh, yes. And because they have no engineering office here. And I was wondering if it's the possibility, uh, uh, is it Ramili that's still in charge? Elias. Ellen. Ellen. Yeah, Ramili. Uh, that maybe he could come down here and speak to us about it. I think the, I think the engineer that you're speaking with um, is not going to be. Hi, I'm sorry, uh, Chief. Uh, probably expected to handle this himself. I didn't hear what engineer she had spoken with. Would you be certain to reach out to Elliot? Uh, he is, he is. Uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it when I'm here in the future. He's always been responsive to us. If there's a reason to say no, we'll tell it. But a lot of times he is very helpful. I, 
I also want to reiterate, I don't, personally, professionally, and community opinion do not feel like this is an enforcement issue, that this has been due to lack of enforcement or that maybe necessarily enforcement is the only answer. I've seen you there. My kid has seen you there. Others see people. It is not a, a local issue. As we are a pass-through city with 281, I think it's just a lot of people who don't know the town and think that they're leaving and then don't care to slow down. It's not necessarily because PD's not writing tickets to the local guys. I, I don't if, think that's y'all's fault at all. I think if he had to address that in front of us, it might, it might make him a little more responsive. Uh, with TxDOT? Sure. Yeah. I was saying I didn't think it was our local PD, that it was a lack of enforcement from our local PD because I don't necessarily right. feel that this is local individuals blowing through this line. Well, we're definitely not opposed to anything that would warn motorists of that upcoming intersection and that there is a red light there. You know, it is the highest speed red light within our city limits, and obviously we have our city's most inexperienced drivers <laughs> pulling out of there. Uh, trust me, we, we want to keep them well, safe, and I, and I bring to you enforcement just because that is something that we can control right now. I, I, I think the important, too, is looking towards the future. Uh, we're going to have a business park that's also going to be out on 183 South with speed limits of 70 miles an hour. And we're going to have to deal. Uh, they need to understand our concerns regarding that on state highways currently. And it's not going to get any better in the near future. We can take to uh, our engineer your concerns and suggestions and uh, see what we can work up. and. And, if, it, and we welcome a workshop with them if they wish to, to join us or whatever we need to do. We'll see if we can facilitate that. I'm sure we can. Thank you, Council. Appreciate you being here this evening. Thanks. Last item on the workshop is discussion regarding any item on the regular agenda. Does anyone wish to bring up anything we'll be discussing on the regular agenda? We have a motion to adjourn workshop. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It does give us eight minutes of recess prior to our 6 p.m. start time. At this time, if you are properly distanced, you may remove your mask. For those watching from home, if you wish to call in and be a part of tonight's meeting, the phone number is 512-556-0332. Item number 1.1, 1 .1, public hearing. Citizens' comments. Any citizen who desires to address the City Council on a matter not included on the agenda may do so at this time. The City Council may... Yes, I forgot that part. Um, may not deliberate on items presented under this agenda item. Do we have anyone who wishes to speak on an item not on the agenda? Mr. White. This is, <coughs> this is different for me. <clears throat> Over the weekend, uh, my father-in-law. I don't think they have you. I don't no, think I'm, they're picking you up. Can you hear me now? How about now? Well, 
over the weekend, uh, my father-in-law's house was uh, physically struck by a vehicle, uh, drove into his living room, knocking about a three-foot hole through his living room, busting his windows out, <clears throat> knocked his heater completely out of his house. There's no heat in his house. Um, and this is the fifth time that his property's been hit by a vehicle. Um, first time for his house, but the other times were a privacy fence, they were holes that were in the ground that have been broken out. Um, I took some pictures leading up to the house. I'd like y'all to just take a look and flip through them. Driving up to his house at the very end of Brown Street before you turn right, you can either go left and go into the nursing home or go right into Castleberry. So my father-in-law's house sits right there. <clears throat> it's real easy to miss that turn and not turn back. <clears throat> but we need to do something about blocking it, possibly arrows, anything, uh, concrete, dividers, telephone poles, something. If there's anything we can do to help direct traffic definitely away from his property, that, that would be great. Does any staff wish to speak? <coughs> yeah, uh, Mayor, Mayor and Council, we we went out there today, and we're going to get with Flint. And we're going to we're going to dig some holes, put some more posts back down, put better signage, and we'll also see about lighting it up. Uh, that's where we are right now, but we are working on it, and we di we did get the insurance from that so we're going to file on this guy too about paying for all what we're fixing to do so we'll see how that goes any questions thank, thank you. you public comments we're not allowed to really engage does anyone else have anything they wish to speak on that's not on the agenda all right we're going to go backwards now to the part of the meeting that i already skipped that's presentations and proclamations uh, this evening we have in the swearing in of officer dylan Boyvin, did I say it right? And close enough? You know who you are? Okay, well, come on up. Mayor Council, um, I'm here tonight to introduce to you our newest police officer, as you said, Dylan Bovin. Um, we have his wife here, Katie, and his son, Wyatt. Would y'all come up and join us? Just a real quick uh, introduction on Dylan for those of you that might not know him. He is from here, so you might. Uh, Dylan's a uh, is it 2013 graduate of Lampasas High School. Graduated uh, Central Texas College Police Academy in December of 2019. He started with the Lampasas County Sheriff's Department. Just recently with our vacancy, we, uh, we had an application process where he boarded. The board uh, picked Dylan and made recommendation to the chief to hire him. She accepted our recommendation. And Dylan started his field training with us uh, November 16th. So he's currently still in the field training. We hope to have him out on the road uh, on, on his own here at the beginning of January, somewhere middle of January. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, Judge Gradell.
Welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Back on track now with item 1.2, citizens' comments. Any citizen who desires to address the city council on a matter that is included on the agenda may do so at this time. Does anyone wish to speak on an item that is included on the agenda? Item 1.3, public hearing. Public hearing to receive citizens' comments regarding a request for specific use permit, SUP, for property being lot 2A, minor amending replat of lots 2 and 3 of the Walmart edition number 1, Lampasas County, generally located at 1708 Central Texas Expressway Suite 3, Lampasas, Texas, to allow for a smoke tobacco shop, specifically a vapor store, located in an area zoned Retail R. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This item was brought before planning and zoning on December 3rd with regards to this request. Um, it is, like I stated, it is a specific use permit for them to be able to do a vapor store, which is based on our regulations that we currently have for zoning. And we did sound notifications to six people within the property owners within that 200 foot radius and we have not received any written testimony as of the date of that notice and um, like i said planning and zoning is in favor of this request and i do have a representative from vapor maiden here if you have any specific questions for them my question is for you what is the requirement for distance from a church for a facility of this kind i, I, I do know in the past that there's so you can only be within so many feet of a church or a daycare or a school facility do we know what that would be for smoking I'm not familiar with that. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, for I know for alcohol, I was was too. I speak from unfortunately previous experience and ownership in a business. And if you had, if that that's the product that you sold and you advertise in your windows or exterior those products, you had to be so many feet from a from the church, from the school. So can we make sure that we're we're meeting those requirements? Absolutely. On that? I will look into that. Okay. We have anyone else who wishes to speak? I have a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Item 1.4, public hearing to receive citizens' comments regarding a request for a specific use permit, SUP, for property being, lo being lot 8, block 2, 0 0.497 acres of the East Lampasas edition, generally located at 1002 East 4th Street, Lampasas, Texas, to allow for a portable storage building in an area zoned commercial C. Um, again, Mary Council, um, this is a request for a specific use permit for a portable building. Um, it is something that's required in commercial zoning. Um, the area around this is commercial zoning as well as some, some single family. Um, Mr. Harrell already has the portable building on his property, which you can see in the pictures provided. Um, we did go to planning and zoning. There are some conditions that they requested that we actually look at when we do the ordinance, which I did implement that as well. They wanted to make sure that the actual building that they are approving, it remains the same building. It doesn't change out frequently and that they wanted to make sure as well that it doesn't um, change or reduce any of the required parking, which it does not. So I did put those stipulations in the ordinance as well, but with that being said, planning and zoning did recommend approval to you. What was the process in having the building first and the request after? Um, I think it was an um, oversight. Um, I reached out to him to let him know that it is a requirement for a specific use permit, and he happily obliged and sent me the application requirement and paid his fees. And planning and zoning voted unanimously on this item? Yes. There was one uh, entry that came through that objected a church, and yes. I was wondering if they can actually see that building from their church. No, um, he did, Mr. McCord did come in and drop that off to me, and when I was reading through it, I kind of went out to the parking lot and kind of talked to him a little bit, because I didn't think he understood what the request was, that it was for one storage building that was already in place. Mm -hmm. I think he misunderstood it was going to be like storage units oh. right there beside the facility, so he was a little confused, but um, once we talked, he was okay with it, and he felt better about the situation. Okay. Wonder, I wonder if he would have an objection if we put one more item on there in <coughs> regards to a stipulation that uh, it's an accessory building to whatever use. It can't be used as a commercial property, the portable building itself. Can't be used as an actual business within the portable building? Right. No, that would be a completely different request, but I can have that definitely put in a minutes to make sure that well, it's just for storage 
Mike, why does he need a personal storage building in a retail facility? I didn't ask him what he's storing in there. It's just something that he needed. I don't know if it's for his the beauty shop or for his real estate. I, I don't know what the what the contents are. I have no idea. He just needed a storage building there on his site. I, I do have a problem with the fact that he built it and then asked for the permit. To be honest, I mean, a lot of people in the commercial and retail district, they don't understand that they can't put a storage building on their property. It actually comes up quite often where they're not sure. I mean, yes, they mostly will talk to us about it first, but they don't think that it's a big deal. They really don't second thought, no second thought to it because it is commercial, and they're just using it for storage. But he's a realtor, so, so he should know better. I'm sorry? He's a realtor, though, so shouldn't he know the codes? Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, there are certain codes that he does come in contact with on a daily basis, and he should, and we should have discussed it, and he knows that. And we've, like I said, when I brought it to his attention, he quickly put in his application, and we got it resolved. But I don't know what the train of thought is. I mean, people do things all the time without coming and asking us first, unfortunately. Was he invited to the meeting this evening? Yes, he was. Council or public have any more comments during the public hearing? We have a in, in regards to how this happened, a staff person saw it on a weekend, came in Monday and said, could he pull a permit for that? So this was literally something that in a few days it was noticed because it's hard not to notice it on Forest Street. And the question was asked to appropriate staff, could he pull a permit? Any more questions or comments? Do I have a motion to close this public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you, Becky. Item 2.0, minutes 2.1, discussion of possible action containing approval of minutes of the regular meeting on November 23rd, 2020. I'd move to approve. I saw no mistakes. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. 3.0, consent agenda. 3.1, discussion of possible action regarding purchases and charges in excess of $4,000 from November 1st, 2020 through November 30th, 2020. And item 3.2, the second reading of an ordinance of the City Council of Lampasas, Texas, amending Chapter 38, Fire Prevention and Protection, Article 4, Fire Code, adding new sections 38-108 to be entitled Underground Fire Line Requirements for the Fire Suppression Systems, repealing any inconsistent provisions, providing a severability clause, and establishing an effective date. Does anyone wish to pull any of these items from the consent agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. It is unanimous. We have no board and department reports this evening. 5.0, routine matters. 5.1, city manager's operational report. Just a few brief uh, comments, Mayor. Um, the one thing I do want to say off the bat is that we sprinkled throughout my report kind of a pat on the back to some staff that uh, in the midst of COVID and putting together the CARES Act, and by the way, Chief Smith sent me the entire worksheet from that. So if you want to get a, a true sense of, of uh, the effort that was made, not only by Chief Smith, but by Yvonne, who was also trying to close the books, pulling together what staff she needed to there, Monica and Christy working on holidays because that was the only day AT&T could come in and pull wire. So even though that stuff is sprinkled throughout my report, I want to, I really, I'm impressed with our staff. They go above and beyond, and these are just a few of the examples of what they've pulled off uh, here in the last uh, three to four weeks. Sales tax, we can uh, continue to see good numbers on that, up about 24, 25 uh, percent for the same period a year ago. Uh, we did did uh, see some news reports that some of this might may be uh, a result of internet sales, uh, as well as uh, obviously just people wanting to stay closer to home and shop. But uh, that trend uh, contends to, to to frankly surprise us every month we see it. Traffic counts, uh, we just got notified last week that the 2019 traffic counts are now uh, up and published. It takes TxDOT about a year for that to go through the review process, and, and uh, they tweak that in some cases. I've included the 2019 traffic counts as well as the 2018 traffic uh, counts in, the, uh, uh, in your packet. 
It also includes the urban count, which is basically the counts on the side streets. They do those once every five years. So you'll see that those numbers are the same. I think the, uh, uh, the obvious is that that traffic on Key Avenue between about 4th and North is the most significant traffic count in our town. Uh, and that, for the year, went up about 6%. Uh, you're welcome to look at it on the city's interactive web mapping page as well as the text.web uh, web page. Comp plan, I referenced that uh, in my discussion on our, about our planning meeting on Friday. We have received the final two chapters. Chapter 5, just as a reminder, that was uh, reviewed somewhat extensively in outline form. Uh, we now have the published form with additional supporting narrative. Uh, chapter 6, implementation. Uh, that's something that we'll really sink our teeth into over the next uh, probably four to six weeks. Uh, our goal at this point is to uh, do a very quick staff review just to see if there's anything that's way out of line or any grammatical errors. Uh, we will then take that probably to CPAC uh, sometime in the second or maybe even third week in January. Uh, we are tentatively looking at a joint planning commission and city council meeting uh, on the 28th of January, which I believe is the last council meeting for January in, in workshop. And then at that point, if everybody is, uh, feels uh, pretty good about it, then we'll take it to planning commission for consideration in February and then back to council for consideration. Uh, the, the things that we will do is take a look at the various tasks that have been outlined as a result of the recommendation chapter, chapter five, and try to put them in a category of short term, one to two years, medium term, and long term. The follow-up exercise of that would be take all your short term tasks and say, okay, let's, let's see if we can get some sort of uh, hierarchy in terms of the way we, we pick those off. So that's our, our task for uh, probably the next uh, couple of months. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that on Friday. Bandwidth, as I referenced, uh, Monica and Christy have done a great job. I believe that project is 100% wrapped up. We had a few tweaks uh, last week, but uh, uh, certainly that was a needed uh, boost to our technology, support pu public safeties, and just our, our general uh, business requirements. Uh, demolition debris, this is just a follow-up uh, from last meeting. We did talk to the contractor for the East 5th property uh, they, they are a, a licensed uh, hauler and they're going to provide us tipping tickets uh, when that debris is uh, uh, de deposited at, at a licensed uh, landfill. LCRA steps forward. They will be here, the, uh, I believe it's April 9th, to install playground uh, uh, mulch and sod around the Brook Park restrooms. This is a program that they've done now for three or four years uh, and we've always, they've painted railings, they've been at, uh, uh, you know, they've been in the baseball fields, they've been at uh, painting picnic tables, so uh, it's their way to uh, provide us some manpower and materials as an outreach program. CARES funding, as I said, that's uh, been, been uh, put forward. I think that tomorrow is the deadline. Is that shipped off, Chief? We also want to recognize, in addition to the folks I've, I've talked about previous, Bessie White, Pam Torres, Chastity Shiflett, and Mary Garcia, all had a hand in, in shagging stuff, scanning stuff, copying stuff, so uh, a very impressive file. Also want to recognize Shanda Subia, 14 years, uh, was hired uh, 14 years ago this December, and, and Yvonne, 23 years. Only feels like 35, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Finley. Out of 5.2, Mayor's comments. The lovely Mayor Pro Tem, Ms. T.J. Monroe, has asked for this portion of the meeting to be turned over to her. As usual, on behalf of Vision Land Passes, I just want to say thanks to all the people that helped us make our lighted Christmas parade as safe and wonderful as it was. We had a difficult time this year getting the parade together. In fact, we wondered if we would even have the parade at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. But I do want to thank Ricky Roy and his group. I want uh, Carlos in the, the street department, Flint, especially in uh, his group, and um, Chris and Jesse from the parks department. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, and thanks is not enough, but it's all I've got, so thanks. 
Item 6.0, unfinished business. We don't have any this evening. Moving on to new business, item 7.1, discussion of possible action regarding an ordinance amending the adopted budget for the municipal government of the city of Lampasas for the fiscal year of October 1, 2019 to September 30th, 2020. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm pleased to show you with the budget amendments. Um, really, we did pretty good this year. Our year end looks really good. And so what we would like to do, we just have a couple of them. The accelerated purchases that you approved um, for fiscal year ending 20 were all able to be um, captured in our operating budget. So we didn't have to move any extra money over to cover those. Um, so what we would like to do is move 400000 over to increase the fund balance in our general fund to make that a little bit more healthier and um, cover a little bit on golf course, $4,500. They were a little bit short on their revenues. So those two together, 404, 503. Um, electric department has plenty of money to be able to cover that. Yeah, the electric department. Do you have a motion from council? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments or questions? If it wasn't for COVID, I'd give you a high five. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. That is I would just like to say thank you to Randy Clark. He hired me 23 years ago and gave me the foot in the door. So I went, appreciate that. I went and picked up my my packet Saturday, and she was in there slaving away, and she showed me her care, her care boxes, you know, like this, just getting that together, and right. she was working on finishing the budget amendment. So she has an enormous task. She's got enormous work ethic as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 7.2, discussion of possible action regarding the first reading of an ordinance for a specific use permit, SUP, for property being lot 2A, <coughs> minor amending replat of lots 2 and 3 of the Walmart edition number 1, and Passes County, generally located at 1708 Central Texas Expressway Suite 3, and Passes, Texas, to allow for a smoke tobacco shop, specifically a vapor store, located in an area zoned retail R, Becky did present this to us during workshop session, excuse me, during public hearing. Do I have a motion from council? I move that we wait till uh, Becky does the research to make sure that that is, it is not. A, it is a 1,000 foot requirement on outdoor signage advertising tobacco products. 1,000 feet from a church uh, for outdoor signage only. It does not involve the, in, this, the selling or the inside advertisement. Is she tabling this? She has so a motion to table, but that's. We're I'll make a motion to well, approve. Then. Well, we have a motion to table. Do we have a second to the motion to table? Second. You moved to, to table it as well. I'm sorry. You you're making a motion to table this item as well. No, I'm asking if she tabled it. Made the motion. To Kermit, made a motion to a table. Motion it. from Miss Keeney to table this item. Does that does that motion have a second? The motion fails due to a lack of second. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have and a second, second for that? that? Mr. Clark seconds that motion. All those, any more dis discussion or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those unanimous. No, nay. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. You can see my mouth. With the mask, if you'll raise your hand for me. <laughs> yeah. We have four, four and one in opposition being Ms. Keeney. Good. Yep. Item 7.3, discussion of possible action regarding the first reading of an ordinance for a specific use permit, SGP, for property being Lot 8, Block 2, 0 0.497 acres of the East Lampasas Edition, generally located at 1002 East 4th Street, Lampasas, Texas, to allow for a portable storage building and an area zoned Commercial C. Again, this item was brought up during public hearing. Do I have a motion from Council? With I'll make a, a motion. Oh, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. Uh, with a uh, addition of item three, that the portable building can't be used by itself as a commercial building. Is that your motion? Retail. Yes, I'd move to approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve with the addition of word verbiage that says it cannot be used for commercial retail standalone. as a standalone. Don't we want these other two items as well? But that's with the addition of the item number two, three, along with those. And I'll second that. Any additional comments or questions from council, staff? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. So that is four, four and one against. 
Item 7.4, discussion of possible action regarding the possible selection of the website photo contest winner. To save Monica from getting up, I will let you know that there's three entries this month. Does council have a motion for a winner? Pick a number, any number, one through three, let's go. Um, I move that we recommend entry three. I have a motion for entry number three. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor for entry number three, please say aye. 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 I think that's unanimous. Y'all flag me down if, you're, if it's not unanimous. Item 7.5, discussion of possible action regarding a request to approve the quote for two life pack 15 from Stryker, a sole source provider in the amount of $63,509.64. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The CARES Act allows for the purchase of medical equipment that's necessary for emergency medical response. The Lampasas Fire Department is, uh, will purchase two life pack 15 heart monitors. Uh, this equipment will upgrade what we currently have uh, it's used to assist all patients in the assessment of hemodynamic stability. It's capable of providing a 12-lead EKG, interpretation, blood pressure monitoring, cardiac pacing, defibrillation, O2 blood level analysis. The new Life Pack 15s will replace the two existing Life Pack 12s that we have at this time. We have a motion from Council. So moved. Second. A motion, second. Questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. Item 7.6, discussion of possible action regarding the RFQ for the skate park. Chris is under the weather. He's not feeling well. Uh, certainly Vicki can uh, correct me if I say anything that's, in, that's not right. Um, Council, at your place on the dais, you have a memo that was uh, published today. Uh, regarding the tally for both the uh, pavilion and skate park uh, projects. <clears throat> I'll just review the memo uh, briefly, but uh, uh, Council may recall on October 12th, you directed staff to prepare requests for proposals for design and construction of the Campbell Park Skate Park and Pavilion. We advertised those November 20 and 24 uh, through the dispatch as well as through the website, and we also keep a subscriber list for any uh, projects that are out for bid. Um, the, just as a reminder, and we, we've done the design build method from time to time, but not recently, but it does, uh, is the procurement method being utilized for both projects per the Texas government code? <clears throat> just as a reminder, it does not waive any requirement for pay, payment or performance bonding. Uh, that is something that we've actually included in our RFQs as a requirement. Um, the other thing just to point out that the design build method does require a third party engineer or architect to act as the city's representative. Uh, in discussions with Councilman Clark before the meeting, you know, we're going to have to find that particular engineer with that particular expertise. We can't just go out and hire a structural engineer to look at drainage, you know, we've got to find someone that's specifically suited for that particular review and, and representation on the city's behalf. That's a requirement, and that's something that we will uh, include in our negotiations. Based on this uh, method of procurement, we rate the qualifications of the firms or teams uh, that submit, and uh, we're, we're seeking you to, to, to formally direct us to begin negotiations with the highest ranked firms on each, each matter or each project. If we are unable to develop a scope and a fee, uh, and those uh, protections and requirements and qualifications uh, that for the city uh, with the number one ranked firm then we would ask council to terminate the negotiation at that time and we would go to the number two firm. Um, we understand from council's uh, previous comments uh, that <clears throat> we, we definitely want to be sensitive uh, in terms of geotechnical investigation, water table investigation, uh, as well as the other item that I think we, we heard uh, loud and clear is we want to also be inclusive of some of the stakeholders and users of these facilities. Uh, that being said, the, score, the, the tally sheets are attached to the memo. Um, for the pavilion, we'd, uh, and, and again, these are two separate agenda items, but I'm gonna go ahead and get, get them both taken care of uh, at one time. But for the pavilion, uh, the highest ranked uh, contractor firm team was LAMCO. 
uh, out along Passus and on the skate park that was Spa Skate Parks, and they're officed in uh, Austin, Texas. I would be uh, happy to uh, try to answer any questions, or if, uh, Vicki, did I forget anything? In regards to the current agenda item, which is item 7.6, do I have a motion regarding the RFQ for the skate park? I'll make a motion for that. And what what is the motion? To direct staff to negotiate the project scope and cost with the highest ranked firm. That firm being SPA, SPA Skate Parks. Do we have a representative from that? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there a representative from uh, any of those firms here this evening? I do have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, in regards to the warranty, Finley and I spoke uh, earlier before the meeting about I'm concerned about after the concrete's poured and the thing's built uh, in regards to a maintenance bond or some sort of, of warranty. Uh, obviously, I'm concerned of one is the water table and floating the concrete out of the ground. The other is how do they develop that. The other is the expansion joints that need to be put in. How will they be handled? And I'm concerned after it's included as cracking and what kind of warranties they would have in regards to that. I think staff will address that with them and then if you would ask at the time that we get the contract finalized that we have a representative there to come to the council meeting. Absolutely, and, and we'll certainly, uh, <clears throat> this, this, we aren't gonna bring you back a contract if we get information in the interim, so we certainly wanna ask those questions well before we start packaging up right. uh, the, the, uh, the contract and we can certainly uh, follow up at a future meeting. We currently have a motion and a second to approve the highest rated firm being SPA Skate Parks. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Item 7.7, .7, discussion and possible action regarding the RFQ for the Campbell Park Pavilion. We have a motion from council. I move that we approve city to move forward with negotiation with LAMCO. The highest ranked firm. candidate currently. We have a motion from a second. second to that motion. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7.8, discussion of possible action concerning reimbursement of funds to land pass this economic development corporation for expenses related to COVID-19 pandemic. This will be the last item that we deal with as far as the CARES Act funding. Uh, the CARES Act actually allows for economic stimulus money to be dispensed through the city. Uh, we talked about this early on back in the spring when COVID first entered into the community. Uh, the Land Pastors Economic Development Corporation did an economic stimulus package. This is not an addendum to that. What this would be is this would be reimbursing the LEDC for the funds that they did expend. We've already had a paper trail as far as emails go back and forth with representatives from the state on the CARES Act. They've assured us that that does qualify for this funding. Uh, what we're trying to do here is get approval from you as a, as a mayor and council to provide that funding with it. We get reimbursed. The $100,000 would go to the LEDC. I have a motion from council. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is Thank unanimous. You Thank you. Item 7.9, discussion of possible action concerning the approval of bench pads at Campbell Park in an amount not to exceed $7,500. Uh, Mayor and Council, as the summary page indicates, uh, the Lime Pastures Heritage Foundation generously donated seven sets of concrete benches, benches and tables for placement at Campbell Park. Uh, we, Chris Eicher uh, thought that it would be in the best interest to put these on concrete pads. We did seek uh, bids for those. Uh, and at the time, I believe, that with the time of publication or the time that it was drafted, uh, we asked for a not to exceed 7,500, but you do have two proposals in there, one for 7,256, one for 7,500. I do know that there was a third a contractor that was solicited to provide a, a bid for that and uh, they were unable to, to get the numbers to us. But uh, we'd ask you to consider approval for this work uh, so that we can get the benches uh, installed. I have a motion from council. 
So moved. Second. I have a motion Question. and a second. Comments or questions? Uh, is it to Canal Stable then? The award? That, that would be what we'd like to do, yes. But the motion, and, and this is a, a governance issue. I understand the additional $250, but I just want, it didn't mention who we were awarding. The, the, the motion, I believe, suggests not to exceed 7,500. So if council would want to modify that, you would award it to Canales Dibble for 7,256. But we currently have a motion that we need to, to take action on, of a, of a motion and a second to award a bid not to exceed $7,500, or to, to carry forward with the action not to exceed $7,500. So Mayor, it's certainly staff's intention to go with the low bidder in this regard. That would have been my motion to the low bidder, not to exceed $7,500. Let's take a, let's take a mo vote on the motion as it was made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Do I have a motion to adjourn into executive session? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The City Council of the City of Lampasas, Texas will meet in closed executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Chapter 551 as follows. Section 551.0711A and 551.0712. Consultation with attorney by telephone and or in person concerning matters upon with with the attorney has a duty and or responsibility to report to the governmental body and or matters posted on the regular agenda. Item 8.2, Section 551.087, Economic Development, one, to receive and evaluate financial information received from a business prospect to discuss same and or to deliberate regarding commercial or financial information that the city has received from a business prospect that the city seeks to have, locate, stay, or expand in or near the city with which the city is conducting economic development negotiations and or two, to deliberate an offer of any financial or other incentives to any business prospect described as above. Yes, Ms. Walsh may join us in executive session. Uh, uh, Mayor and Council, I'll ask uh, if it's without objection, uh, the Assistant City Manager to start, and then I'd like to go through the order of items with Council and then invite staff in as needed. We've adjourned from executive session and we're now reconvening in regular session. Item 9.0, action on executive session. 9.1, discussion of possible actions concerning items posted and discussed by council in executive session. I'd like to make a motion to direct staff to negotiate and prepare public utility easement for benefit of the city and the property owner for extension of utilities adjacent to Hillside Acres subdivision. I'll second that. We have a motion to second comments or questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh -huh. That is unanimous. Is that it? I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor, say goodbye. Aye. Bye. Aye.